it actually worked. <laughs> All right, friends, it's time to add more power to the Airstream. When we first renovated it, we put 500 watts of solar on the roof, 400 amp hours of lithium batteries inside, and that worked great for like a year and a half. But over the last six months, we've noticed that our power usage has gone up. So there's two pieces to this. The first is that we need more solar power coming in. I think our 400 amp hours are fine. It's just that we're not filling them back up every day, especially in the winter when the days are shorter. First step is we're going to add a ground deploy panel, which is right over here. So we got ourselves a 200 watt Renogy suitcase. So this is good. The problem is though that our current solar charge controller inside the Airstream isn't big enough to handle all the panels on the roof plus this extra 200 watts. So we're going to have to add another solar charge controller and we're going to combine them together. So we have a blue sky. Right now we got another smaller blue sky. He's okay. He'll be set up as the slave and the other one will be set up as the master. We'll connect them together. We've got to wire this in. Uh, we've got to add cables to the actual solar panel. Um, to our plug, this guy right here, which we already we already installed um, a plug on the Airstream when we renovated it because we thought we might do this at some point. So this is the piece that goes with it. So we got to run the wires in there, run the wires out of the back of that, into this, and then out of this into the battery. Now, in addition to this, I actually got a Vitamix, which means we need a bigger inverter. This guy over here is the new inverter. 2,000 watts of pure sine wave DC inverter power. <laughs> so we got a bunch of stuff to do. Let's get to it. So we connected the positive and the negative and the ground. We're going to screw these back on and then we're going to try to fit it back down in there where it barely fits. We're going to turn the batteries back on and we're going to turn this on and see if it works. There's the test. See that little green light? That means it's working. Oh, now it's orange. That means it's charging. As part of our inverter upgrade, we decided to get a remote display. Really, I just wanted a remote switch so we could turn it off. This was all they made for it. Turn it on. And it tells me voltage, amps, hertz, watts. The thing is, we have no idea where we're going to put this. <laughs> okay, so first project done. New massive inverter has been installed. It blended chai with the Vitamix, no problem. So now we are on to the new solar panel and new solar charge controller because the current solar charge controller which is a blue sky 3024 something it maxes out at 40 amps and right now we can put in about 30 35 with the uh, panels we have and so we'll be putting in another 10 to 12 with the new panels so it's 
too close to that 40 amp max. So we got another tiny blue sky and we're actually going to chain them together. So the, the one we have in there will be the master and this will be the slave. So it will inherit all the charge settings um, and our remote display will show the total amount of amps coming in from both charge controllers and all the solar panels. So we won't have to be looking multiple places for that. The only issue I've run into this is we over gauged like all our wires quite a bit. And so we were hoping to run some like four gauge and six gauge into this, but, but look, this is all I got to connect to. So I'm like 10 gauge max. So we're just gonna have to run smaller wire. It should be okay. I've looked at the charts and everything. It's not as big as I would like it. That's what she said. So these are my crazy notes, trying to figure out wire sizes and what kind of connections I need and how long everything is. Um, yeah, and it's all changed since I wrote this down because I can't do four gauge or six gauge. So we're just gonna have to roll with it. These are gonna go to the um, the inside of the plug where the solar panel will plug in, so a positive and negative. Then we gotta go out to the battery. That's not as simple for our setup. We're not gonna go straight onto the battery leads. Um, the negative will go onto the negative post, but the positive is actually gonna run through this guy. We have a 50 amp on there right now, but I'm worried that coming out of this solar charge controller and the other solar charge controller, we could be getting close to 50 amps max. So I'm gonna go ahead and bump this up to 100. This just protects the system in case for some reason the solar panels go nuts and try to put a bunch of energy in. It protects the batteries and, and the system from, from anything happening. We're gonna run the same gauge cable, but we're gonna have to put some bigger lugs on it to connect to this. And our negative post is actually pretty big, so we may even have to go with something like this big to get onto it. But once we do that, we'll do the communication wires and then we should be ready to put it in. So I don't know how well you can see that, but that is the plug that we installed to plug in the ground deploy solar panel. I've got to basically connect the PV wires from solar charge controller into the back of that. There's no way to get a camera back there, so I'm just going to screw it. Coming out of this is going to stay the same. This goes to the positive of our battery. But what we're changing on the other end, instead of just one connection going here, we've got this second connection that's got to go on here. That combines both solar charge controllers. Then we need to connect the negative to a negative post, and then a twisted pair to the other solar charge controller. Be done on the inside. This is our original solar charge controller. So I'm gonna have to open it up and connect that twisted pair to it, which will be very awkward, but oh my gosh, where does it even connect? <laughs> That was awkward, but got the twisted pair connected. So now I think we're ready to turn it back on.
Now we have to do the wire for the solar panel and connect it to the plug so we can plug it in. We got two connections. We've got to uh, do some MC4s to connect to these and then on the other end of these we'll run it straight into this guy and then we'll be done. MC4 connectors. Um, this is the positive one. It's got a little positive sign and it's red. So I've got to connect it with this one. So I've got the metal piece in the middle and then I've got this this boot on here in the back that'll screw on. So these are on here then I'm gonna strip this down, crimp this on, and then piece it all together. This is the positive connection, so just snap it in. So that's water resistant and UV resistant, which is nice. So the other end of this, I'm gonna put into the plug. On the back of the plug, I made sure to go into number one and number three, because this actually has three holes on it if you wanna use them, but we're just using two. So this is the positive. We ran the positive to number one on the inside, so we're running it positive to number one on this one too. All right, it's together. Set the panel up and plug it in and see what happens. Okay, we were getting about one amp. Now we're getting almost five. So that means it actually worked. We got 200 more watts right here, plus the 500 on the roof, and it's all wired up to the second solar charge controller. And those are two are connected together, so they're talking to each other. Um, and we added a new beefier inverter. A quick follow-up. You saw us getting really excited about five amps coming in. That was at the end of the day. The sun was going down. So now that we're actually using all 700 watts, we've had it for a few days, we're pretty excited to report that we get about 40 to 45 amps coming in during peak hours, which is perfect for us. So you can see here, um, the charge controller, it's noon right now, it's putting out about 36 amps and it's a little cloudy. So yeah, it's gonna go up here in a little bit. So this is perfect for us. Before we were, we were losing about five to 10% a day, even with a sunny day. Uh, and now with this, even if we have a cloudy day, uh, we're able to catch back up quickly and we're able to fill up our batteries again every single day. So, so far so good. It all worked. Now we've got a huge mess of tools and wires to clean up. Peak times. <laughs> Peak solar times. Solar times. Solar times. Are you still recording? Yep. <laughs>